Thank you for coming to my talk. Um, my name is Jennifer Lee, and I'm going to be talking about learning Spring Boot first as a student, then as a teacher. Currently, I'm an instructor at the Montgomery College in Maryland, and I'm excited to be here and share all the ways that I've got started with coding in general, uh, with web development, and some of the success stories that I carry with me from our students. And at the very end, um, if we have time, I'll take comments, um, insights, and questions then. So a little bit about me. I'm a Java web developer with a background in public health and statistics. So I'm familiar with the statistical programs like Stata, SPSS, SAS. I don't know if that's familiar to anyone here. but And um, I heard from my friends in grad school programs that they were using this program called R. And then I heard from another friend that if you know how to use Python, then that makes it easy to understand and use R more fully. So it was in the context of a statistical program that I was introduced for the first time to this world of coding and to programming in general. So I first started going to meetups. So in DC, there's a big giant one called Hear Me Code for Women. So it's very woman friendly. Um, and we gather about once a month to share about Python, either on the learning side or the teaching side. And it was the first time that I walked into a room full of women engineers. Um, some of them were developers uh, by job. And some of them were there with a daytime job, but just um, wanting to develop as a hobby. So I was very encouraged by that. And that brought me to taking a Python programming course at an adult continuing education center. So this developer um, took us through bite-sized challenges like the FizzBus challenge, the prime number challenge, um, the recursive factorial, and all those basic things that you probably did years and years ago. And after that, I realized this is pretty fun. I like problem solving with coding. I like that it can turn into actionable things that people can then view as well. It's not just theoretical. So I decided to take a program design course. And uh, when it came to a programming course itself, I was stuck between Python and Java. And I wasn't sure which one to take at the time, so I asked my mom. Mom, which, which one should I take, Java or Python? And uh, she said Java. So I went with Java. And you're probably thinking, OK, you listen to your mom. It's a great job. Good for you. Um, but my mom's actually a COBOL and assembly language developer. So she knew what she was talking about. And I'm very glad that I took Java. And her reasoning for that was Java's been around forever. There's always a lot of jobs in Java, especially in the DMV area where I'm from. Um, and it's a very strongly typed language. So going from Java and then learning other languages like Python is an easier transition other than the, the re reverse way around. So it was in that setting that I came to Java. And then from there, a classmate told me about a Java web development boot camp. And that's where I'm currently at. So I first went through it as a student. This boot camp is funded by the Department of Labor in an effort to hire non-technical people for technical roles. So when I first came in, there were a lot of terminologies that I'd never heard before. Um, server client side, template engines, frameworks, model view controller, these were all very new to me. And I wasn't the only one that felt this way. I mentioned I had a public health background um, a lot of my cohorts had business management background, accounting, agricultural science, animal science, political science, just to name a couple. Just a wide range of people with different backgrounds. When I first came, um, there were a lot of knowledge gaps that needed to be filled. So what we did um, during the eight weeks that we were there for was we built it up layer by layer. So we started out with program design. Um, so we would teach them about the structure theorem and how to see uh, how to see a problem, come up with a solution, and then break them down into actionable steps that not just the future you, but also other people can later update and maintain. And we use GitHub on a daily basis, not just to push our repositories, but also for Git workflow. So 
working with collaborators, working with branches. These are all things that we want them to practice um, for real work situations down the road. On top of that, we also add core Java. So we start with variable declarations, um, your if statements, loop statements, um, arrays, array lists, hash maps, all of those things. And then on top of that, we add object-oriented programming. So we go through classes, abstract classes, interfaces, um, composition, inheritance, and all those important topics that become pivotal, pivotal later on. Um, and then we go into, after we have the back end stuff, we go into front end with HTML and CSS, largely with Bootstrap. And then after that, we add the database complexity. So at first, we start out with the H2 in-memory database, and then we go into using MySQL. We sometimes use Postgres um, for deployment onto Heroku. Um, and then, so all these applications that we have towards the end of the bootcamp have those CRUD functionalities of create, read, update, and delete. And at the very end, we bind it all together with Spring Security to make it nice and secure. And in the last week, we have uh, a week's time to prepare a product in a team of three to four people. So what was it like to learn Spring Root for the first time coming from a non-traditional background? Um, I briefly mentioned that I had no idea what model view controller is, but it soon became clear to me that controller is the uh, the brains behind the operation. The view is what the user sees, and the model acts as this elevator shuttle between the database, the controller, and the view. And once that connection was made, um, bringing that over to the Spring Boot project structure was made pretty naturally. Uh, and once it was made, it, it stuck pretty well with me. So I knew that the repository classes and the controller classes went in the Java file, um, I knew that views went in the templates folder um, and that other static resources went around there. And I knew that the model act as the parameter inside of a function in your controller class. So to me, um, it became very clear that with Spring Boot, Java goes here and, Spring, uh, and HTML and CSS goes here and dependency management goes in the POM file. And then everything else has its place so that developers like myself can do what we love to do the most, which is to turn concepts into working and deployable code. So when I first started, I still had that mindset of a consumer when I approached these web pages. So these are michaels.com, the craft store, and everydollar.com, which are both spring um, powered. And Afterwards, I began to see it with the eyes of a developer. So where I once used to see just images, uh, buttons, and um, banners, I was now seeing tags, controllers, and custom query methods. So this was a very cool turning point, and this carried on. So the type of projects that I worked on um, involved what I call um, bullhorn and robo-interview. So I'm going to talk about those uh, in a little bit of a detail. So Robo, um, this is Bullhorn. Bullhorn is like a mini Twitter website. So the user can register and log in. And then once they're logged in, they can post messages with images using Cloudinary API um, or videos and, and files using the NC type. And once the message was posted, then it was available to view by everybody, but only the person that were authenticated and had made this post can go ahead and do the update and delete functions on top of that. Another project that I worked on is called Robo Interview, and I like to introduce this to people as a real life job workflow application. Um, it's the perfect choice for supervisors that want, don't want to spend too much time interviewing people. Um, so you would log in, and once you're logged in, you would upload multiple versions of your resume, which is pretty realistic. And then once you've done so, you can go over to the, the job board and then select a job to apply to. And once you have applied to with one of the resumes that you have uploaded, um, then you're taken um, to an interview time slot 
where you can pick your time, and this would occur only if you had an 80% or higher match on the job description's keywords. So once that was taken through, they would conduct their interview in a separate chat window. Um, and at the very end, after they've supplied all the answers to the interview questions, um, then all that information would be saved into a chat history, into a file. And that file will be sent as an email attachment to the supervisor. So from the supervisor's end, all he had to do, or he or she had to do, was just wait for the interview to proceed and then read the transcript at the very end. So I thought it was very cool that for the first time I was creating products with my hands or with my teams um, that had real uh, value outside of the workforce. Um, so it's pretty cool. So how did I get started with teaching from being a student? Um, Spring MVC was a key point, and it continued to be as I started to teach. That teaching happened inside the classroom, so as soon as I started to make these connections, um, I drew a lot of these because I thought they were really fun. Um, I started showing it to the person next to me, and then I showed it to the person behind me, and then to the classroom behind ours. And it, it was not long before my instructor caught me teaching it to other people during break time, because it was just this very cool connection. And I felt like if you had this down, um, then you can tackle anything in the Spring Boot ecosystem. And I think I'm largely right. I'm still a beginner, learning a lot of things. Um, but this came through. And then, so I started teaching it as an official instructor to a room full of adult students. And the great thing about teaching Spring Boot is that Eight weeks is clearly not enough time to teach everything about web development. Um, but using Spring Boot does allow us to get rid of that boilerplate code and just focus on helping them become better at developing their business logic. Um, so that means uh, when we take them through our coding exercises, we take them through the typical Hello World application. So they have to use the at controller annotation for their classes the at request mapping to map their requests. And then as we start to do form handling, um, first without Java Beans and then with Java Beans, they get more familiar with get mapping, uh, post mapping, and then for their parameters, at request param, at path variable, and such and such. And once they do more database activities, um, then we start to use uh, at component for data loader classes, and then we toggle with the at one-to-one, at one-to-many, and everyone's favorite, at many-to-many, -many, and all those cascade type, um, fetch type, and all those things. Um, so we can teach them enough so that they can figure out for themselves what needs to be done for each class that they want to use it um, for a specific role. So that also carries on to spring security, which we like to think as like the cherry on top because it's super complex, but it's it pulls you in for some reasons. It's pretty cool. Um, so with Spring Security, you use add configuration, add enable web security. And even in that complexity that is just the Spring Security itself, we can find ways to pick at which parts are important so that newcomers can come in and make themselves more accustomed uh, with some of the language that they use. So we get our students um, from all sorts of backgrounds. Um, some have CS education for computer science, and some have work experience, and some don't. So we have someone like Cesar on one hand of the spectrum, and uh, we have someone else like my mom on the top right corner on the other hand. Um, so my mom, I mentioned she worked as a COBOL and assembly language developer, and she was involved in the computerization of one of the hospitals in Korea. So she had the previous work experience, but she had no idea um, how to use Java or the front end aspect. So she came in and she was able to pick it up and walk out with a Samazon website, which I will get into in just a second. And we have someone like Cesar, and he's on the left top corner. And um, he's your typical CS major in that he's taken your data structures class, he's taken your algorithms class, um, he's He's studied C++, and he can tell you why um, big O notation matters or doesn't. Um, 
But then he was able to come in and show to his potential employers that he could pick up the, he had the skill sets they were looking for and that he was a fast learner and that he was able to turn out these applications in a, a timeline with specific deadlines. So to him, that was, an in, that was an invaluable experience, but in a different way. And we have someone like Jacob on the bottom left. Now, Jacob was an agricultural science major and he had never touched coding before except for some front end stuff. So he had taken some HTML courses on the side, uh, but he came in and he was just able to pick up layer after layer and build really cool stuff. And especially um, unique, the unique thing about Jacob is that he's very resourceful. So we saw him go a lot to um, Google, Stack Overflow, and the Spring documentations. And he was able to figure out a lot of those um, debugging, troubleshooting codes just by simply using what was already available for documentation. And that's another thing that I want to highlight about using Spring Boot inside the classroom. It's very easy for students to teach themselves because the documentation out there is so vast and so detailed and really great to follow for beginners. And last but not least, we have Muhammad on the right bottom side. Now, Muhammad was an OCA, so he was Oracle Certified Associate in Java. Um, but he had ne never had the CS education um, related to web development. Um, so he came in, and of course, he had a large Java base to help him really fly off with his creativity, with his applications. But another thing that I want to note about Muhammad is that um, he was very excited to find new features in Spring Boot. So for example, I think I heard this mentioned a couple of times, but DevTools, the ability to live reload. We did not cover that in class, but he found that on his own through blog posts and, and other things. And um, he learned it on his own, and he was so excited to share it with everybody around him, much like I was with the MVC framework. And um, he ended up writing a blog post and then teaching it to other people during break time and teaching it to us even. Um, so that's Another great thing about Spring, it's easy for students to teach each other. And it, it's been very cool to see that happen kind of naturally in a classroom setting. So some of the projects <clears throat> that our students work on, it's called Samazon. So Samazon, as the name might give away, is a mini Amazon website. So users can come in and scroll through the lists of categories. And once they see what they like, they can select it and add it to their wish list or uh, to their cart. And when they're ready to check out, then they would make a purchase. And once that purchase goes through, um, they would receive an, email, uh, an invoice to their email account that they signed up with. So this is pretty cool um, in that this is something that we use every day. And we were able to recreate an e-commerce website on our own. Um, this was my. I like this one because we gave it a name of, is that what you're wearing? Um, so if you have trouble figuring out what to wear in the morning, this might be the perfect one for you. So the user can log in and put in their city name. So say if I were packing for Madrid, I would put in the word Madrid and put search. And then with that retrieved weather information, along with user preferences and the occasion that they're packing for, it would generate an OOT or an outfit of the day. And then the user could use that as many times as they would like to uh, create multiple outfits and use that to pack for a trip. Um, <clears throat> so this was particularly cool because one of our instructors had the idea to make this into an app. And we tossed it out there as a prompt and we saw it come to fruition from idea to an, a working app that's uh, work, being worked on for version two um, in a week's time with just three people. Last but not least, we have the timesheet application. So this is um, very practical. So as an employee or a supervisor, you can do two things. So as an employee, you would log in and log your hours. As a supervisor, you would then log in and either approve or deny those hours. And once that process was complete, um, then it would send an email out to both the employee and the supervisor to update them on their hour situation. 
So these are just a few of many projects that we have our students work through. Um, and it's very cool to see this come together in eight weeks time. And in summary, what did I learn using Spring Boot? Um, I had a very forever changed perspective from that of a consumer to a developer. So I now have behind the scenes access to what these applications look like. So for example, there was a hackathon that I attended um, called MedHacks pretty recently. And previously, if I had looked at that, I would have been pretty blown away by all the moving aspects of your website. But then I immediately went to inspect element and source code and were able to find whatever was doing um, the active portion that I was curious about. So having the tool set um, to be inquisitive and to follow through to the source has been a tremendous uh, plus that I gained from this experience. Um, and it's also intuitive with MVC. So if you're teaching it to people that have never come across model view controller framework before, you can explain that and that alone very well. And it may just be enough for them to get attached to the rest of the Spring Boot ecosystem and then just add on different portions at a time. So for me, it was MVC and then Spring Boot and then Spring Security and other APIs. And that flowed pretty naturally and it, we were able to build it up from the start. Um, and so it's a great teaching tool, not just for instructors, but also for students themselves. So they can teach themselves pretty well, find supplemental information online pretty well, and they can pick up new features that we hadn't anticipated um, as they keep being updated and then share it amongst themselves. So it helped us all to be great learners and to be great teachers on either side. So some of the coding exercises that we go through, uh, we go by the motto of learning by simply coding, just do it, um, ask questions later. <laughs> and uh, so we walk them through the hello world exercise and then we walk them through form handling with beans and then we go through database management as it gets more complex. So we try to co prepare them for um, different scenarios that they might run into. And then we top it off with Spring Security to make sure our application is not just complete, but also secure and um, accessible only to people that you want to give access to. Um, <clears throat> so these coding exercises became a book. I actually did bring some copies with me today in the hopes of giving it out to people that were interested. But I put them out there <laughs> 10 minutes before my talk. And by the time I came back from the bathroom, they were gone. I forgot where I was. This is like the Spring Boot Enthusiast Hub. Um, so I have one last copy if anybody is very interested, but they're also available uh, with the QR code. So it's been a privilege to come here and talk to you about my user experience. And I'm very humbled that Spring um, is interested in the beginner experience and not just the expert side of things. So I want to thank you so much for being with me, for listening, and I hope that you would go out and share with you to people around you why they should learn Java and not Python or other languages. And also stick with it, even though um, people might tell you that it's boring and hard and stuff. So thank you so much. And I, yeah. And um, I think now I have time for some questions, insights, tips from the audience or, or more. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I mean, there is there is explanation. We don't. Yeah, yeah. What I meant meant by that was people would anticipate future things that you would do. Like if you tell them, if you try to explain, get pull and push, then they'll say like, what if I want to work with collaborators or something down the road? So they'll anticipate the things that we're about to go into. So in that sense, we say, okay, I know you're curious but stick with step one, and then we'll get there in step two, three, four, five. Okay. Yeah. So my question is, like, what if someone asks you, what does mean? Then we explain it. Yeah. <laughs> we explain it, and I like to do this in class where I try to get them in the habit, I, I try to get them to form the habit of Googling well. 
So I would do live search and say, okay, this is where you would find the Spring documentation. Um, it's just like any other Java API. You would put at, you know, you would look at the import, um, find the package, and then look for all the method and constructor summaries. It's so a good question. Yeah, Google well. That's a skill that we want to teach. <laughs> yes. Sorry. Oh yes. No problem. Thanks. Any other comments? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so just to paraphrase, I think you're asking, how does this um, help the CS majors who have gone through the traditional tracks? Um, so we actually see a lot of those students come in, in their junior year or above. And large, um, so I mentioned Cesar earlier where he has the, um, the data structures class, algorithms class, so he has the basics down pretty solidly. But a lot of times, the type of applications that they require you to do for um, school projects are not are, are a different sorts of projects. I remember my brother is a CS major, and he had to create an app in C++ where it was um, the balls were changing um, colors and numbers as they were hitting the walls. It might ring a bell. Um, so those are, I think those do fill a need. I mean, there's definitely things that I'm missing out that he has had that will come to light later on. Um, but I think what this is really good at is it gives you skill sets that you need right away and skill sets that people are looking for. So I've heard some students say, I want, I'm looking for a job, but they're looking for, because um, Spring is big in the DMV area as well. So they would look for Spring or um, just web development in general and they feel like they have all of this, like 300% of the backend stuff, but maybe not the things that connect them to products that people can use. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions about the book, about students, projects? We're good? Did you have a hand? Okay. Yes. Mm hmm Is there an open course for this one? So we don't have any online classroom set up yet. Um, but it was, the book was made in that effort because we have, you know, new moms who want to come but can't be away from their children. So I think this is a good start. I would recommend having some Java bases as you go into it and have some HTML. So we try to have for our students like pre-work courses. Um, so I think those can be done um, by just going to solo learn, doing some Java exercises, and then the same for HTMLs. And then once you have um, enough knowledge to understand what we're referring to in there. And there, there is a place in the book where it says these are meant for Java developers that know some Java to begin with, because it's easier. Otherwise, um, to throw this to somebody um, who have no fundamental basis is really hard. Um, and we see that in our shorter programs. So a lot of those people do come back um, to commit more time so that they're getting more out of the program. Yeah, so for now, it's just the book. Okay. You guys good? <laughs> okay. How long am I here for? <laughs> 12, 20? Okay. Well, I think that's everything. Thank you so much. <laughs>